This is an Action Potential Learning SAT mini lesson teaching you how to solve actual problems to help prepare you for your upcoming test. The example that I'll be working on today comes from the SAT Study Guide, edition 2012, page 400, question number 17. And it's a problem that's involving special right triangles. I know this because I can look at the answer choices. So when you're working through problems, especially in the math problem, a lot of times it is going to help you solve the problem if you look at the answer choices first to try to give you an idea of what the question is actually going to be asking for. Now in this case, when I'm looking at the answer choices, I'll notice that there's some square roots in the answer choices. When I see square roots of 2 and square roots of 3 in the answer choices, almost always it's going to be a problem dealing with a special right triangle. Now this is especially interesting for a problem like this because the question is actually asking for the area of the shaded rectangular region. So we're concerned about this region here. However, knowing what I know, I know that there's going to be some calculations involved having to do with a special right triangle. So that's just going to help me kind of approach this problem a little bit easier. I like to go ahead and just circle the things that I'm going to be looking for in answering the problem. Um, especially for multi-step problems, it really helps for me to actually go back and say, okay, what is it that the question is actually asking so that I know that I'm solving the problem correctly. Once you've done that, so once you've classified your problem and once you've figured out what the problem is asking, you need to make sure that you label your figure completely. Now in this problem here, there's no indication that the figure is not drawn to scale because the test makers will tell you when it's not drawn to scale. So I'm going to assume that it is. And I can basically look at this and just say that it's a rough estimate of what the triangle would actually look like. It says that EF, which is here, and line AC, which is here, are parallel. And it says that F is the midpoint of BC. Now if F is the midpoint, it follows that this piece here must be equal to this piece here. Now since these lines are parallel, and since this side of the triangle is equal to this side of the triangle, it follows in that E is also going to be the midpoint of AB. So now I've completely diagrammed this triangle, and I can go ahead and actually try to solve it. The only numerical information that we're given is that this side is equal to 10 square root of 2, and that's equivalent to this side, which is also 10 square root of 2. There's two really important pieces of information that I can get out of this. The first is that this is an isosceles triangle. And I know that because isosceles triangles have two equal sides. I also know that since it's an isosceles triangle, that this angle here is going to be 45 degrees, and this angle here is going to be 45 degrees. The second thing that I know is that if E, and I'm just going to focus on this side here, if E is the midpoint of AB, and this entire piece here is 10 squared of 2, then AE must be half of that, EB must be half of that. So 10 squared of 2 divided by 2 gives me 5 squared of 2. That means that AE is 5 squared of 2, and EB is 5 squared of 2. Now I've got a little bit of information about this triangle here, but remember the whole goal is to find out the area of the shaded region. So what I'm looking for is the length of this rectangle and the width of this rectangle. But I can actually find that information out by learning more about these individual triangles here. Now this is where the special right triangle comes in. I know the hypotenuse is 5 squared of 2. I know that this angle here is 45 degrees. Since this line right here goes perpendicular to the base, it follows that this piece here, this other angle, is also going to be 90 degrees. And that means that this angle here is also 45 degrees. And it turns out that this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And what I usually ask students to do is to go ahead and redraw a triangle, putting in your equation for your special right triangle. And what I mean by that is, label what's a special right triangle look like? What's its format? And for a 45, 45, 90 triangle, it looks like this, meaning the hypotenuse is equivalent to x squared of 2. Now you can just set your hypotenuses equal to each other to help you solve for x. So the hypotenuse here is 5 squared of 2. That's equal to my formula of x squared of 2. And since there's a square root of 2 on both sides, I can cancel that out. And I'm left with 5 equaling x. Since 5 is x, that means this leg here and this leg here, 5, or this leg and this leg are 5. Now what we've just done is we've calculated the width of this rectangle. Now we just have to figure out the length so that we can calculate the area. I could do the exact same process for this triangle here. Again it's 5 squared of 2. Again these two angles here are 45 and I could use that information to solve this piece here which is also 5. And if I wanted I could do that to every single piece 
And what I would notice is each piece has a length of 5. Now the total length of this rectangle would be 5 plus 5, which is 10. Finally, area is length times width, so 10 times 5 will give me my final answer of 50. Now if you were having trouble solving for this, so let's say that you could come up with this piece here by yourself. You can come up with a width of being 5, but you were stuck on how to get the length. You could have asked yourself, does A or B make sense, right? Does C, D, or E make sense? And try to eliminate a couple of the answer choices so you can at least guess. If the width was 5, we know that the length, since the length actually does look longer here than the width, we know that the length would have to be more than 5. Well, 5 times 5 is 25. So it's very unlikely that A or B would be the correct answer because it's just too small. Now that automatically eliminates two answer choices and you can at least take a best guess between these three choices here if you had to. However, we were able to solve the problem and get our answer of 50. To recap, when you're working through math problems, always look at the answer choices first to see if it will help you solve the problem. And in this case, it did give us a little bit of guidance on how to approach the problem. Next, keep asking yourself what it is that you're actually solving for. And in this case, we needed to basically find the length and the width so that we could find the area of the rectangular region. And finally, make sure that you diagram your figure. That will just help you solve the problem and set it up a little bit easier. This was an Action Potential Learning SAT mini lesson. Thanks so much for watching.